Hello and welcome back to the Old Golden Black with me, Tom Rouse. Don't forget to drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And let's get into today's video. It's been a week with no Wolves football, no stress, no tension. I even went yesterday to watch Shrewsbury against AFC Wimbledon. And it was nice to watch a football match where it didn't matter what the result was and that where, what the results were elsewhere as well, which of course over the next couple of weeks we will have that intense pressure. Wolves are four wins away from promotion. It could be as little as two if results go our way. But things are in our own hands still with eight games to go and we're so, so close. But I've been thinking over the last couple of weeks about Midlands football as a whole. It looks as if Wolves will get promoted now, but it also looks as if West Brom are going to get relegated. It looks like Villa could be in the mix of the playoffs, which is a lottery. Blues could be looking like they're going down. Stoke, if you want to look that far away in the Midlands, could go down as well. Whereas the last time Wolves were in the Premier League, there was a very healthy time in Midlands football. We had all of those teams are in the Premier League. You could argue Leicester is sort of Midlands based as well, but Wolves will be the only could be the only West Midlands team in the Premier League next season. To me, is bad. I enjoy the local derbies. I enjoy the tension of it and the stress of it, and the banter. You know, providing it's healthy and respectful. There doesn't look like there might be any of that next season. So the question is for you. Well, are you happy with Wolves being the best team or the highest ranked team in the Midlands next season? Or would you want the Albion to stay up? Or would you want Villa to come up with us? And for there to be that healthy competition in the Premier League in the Midlands again. This isn't a discussion about who is the best team in the Midlands or who is the most successful in their history or whatever. That's a different video for a different time. But I do think that at the moment, Midlands football has been on the slide a little bit. And even Warsaw are in danger of being relegated from League One at the moment as well. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. The other thing I wanted to talk about today was my thoughts for the top three Wolves players of the season. At the end of every season, they nominate, they announce the three top nominations at the last game of the season, and then it's announced at the end of season awards dinner. And this was discussed on the Wolves Fancast podcast the other day, and I wanted to give my opinion on it as well. They gave their three nominations on the best player, the most improved player, and the most consistent player. And I'll do the same now. So I think without any question, without any shadow of a doubt, the best player for Wolves this season has been Ruben Neves. And he's signed for a £16 million fee, which of course was massive and, and unprecedented for the uh, Championship. But he has definitely performed at that level. He's performed like a Premier League player in the Championship. And when we haven't had him in the team, it's been like a big gaping hole in the middle of our midfield. The game against Fulham recently just really emphasised how much work he actually does. He doesn't, you know, he's only got one assist this season. That was against Burton last week. But he, the amount of winning the ball back and distributing is fantastic. And it's if you've got somebody like that in the Championship, then you're going to go far. And I really do think that he will shine in the Premier League. I can see him staying with us for next season at least. Uh, and then being poached, I think, by a top four club anywhere across Europe. For me, then, the most improved player has got to be Connor Cody. I think over the last two or three years that he's been here, we've seen fits and starts. He's, he hasn't really shone in any role so far. And if you consider this time last year, he was playing at right back with George Savile at left back. But we were all over the place. Under Nuno, he was completely reinvented as this sweeper in the middle of defence. And he's really shone. He's been fantastic. So much so that back in January, I was talking about him being called up for the England team for this international break. But I don't think he's quite at that level yet. I think he's shown over the last couple of weeks that he's a little bit susceptible to mistakes against big, lumbering centre forwards like we saw against QPR and against um, Fulham. He's been an incredible leader for the team this season. But I don't know if he'll be good enough to stay in the team for next season purely because of the sort of level that I think Fosun and Nuno want us to be at next season, which is probably pushing for a top seven place. And the most consistent performer of the year, I've not been a big fan of his, but I think you can't argue with the fact that he's played every single game this season in a position where you've got to run non-stop, back and forth, up and down the pitch, incredible amount of effort. I would have liked him to have got a few more goals and a few more assists, but Matt Doherty has been a superb player this season. And I think he's started to show his more of an attacking threat now over the last couple of weeks. And hopefully, as we come into the end of the season now, he can grab himself another couple of goals and really, really push for that 
Republic of Ireland jersey. So there's my nominations for the Player of the Season awards. They won't be long until they are announced. So they are my three nominations for this season's Player of the Season award. I do think that you know special mentions have got to go to Ivan Cavallero and Leo Bonantini, who at times this season have been fantastic. And you know we can't argue with Cavallero's goals and assists record. Barry Douglas as well with the assists that he provided in the first half of the season. But there are key moments as well, like Ryan Bennett's header against Bristol City. If that hadn't have gone in, you know we wouldn't have had that big gap going into New Year and being able to push on. It's been very much a team performance this season, which I think has been different to previous seasons when we've gone up. We've been a collective all season. It's been the same team pretty much every game all season, and that's what has been the success behind it. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Who would you be voting for in a couple of weeks' time when it comes to the Player of the Season awards? And don't forget to drop a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.